Okay, so we're continuing our discussion of chapter 12. We're moving on to section 8 about shock waves and sonic booms. So what the diagram here is showing is when an object emits um, a sound wave, those waves spread out in all directions, all 360 degrees around. If then that object starts moving, again, we're seeing the Doppler effect here. We're seeing the fact that these waves are closer together because the object is moving in this direction and these waves get spread farther apart. What happens if the object actually moves to the right at a velocity equal to the velocity of sound is that all of these waves, instead of being just close together, they're actually all right on top of each other. And this creates sort of a wall of compressed air because if you remember um, sound waves are essentially alternating compressed and decompressed um, air molecules so this wall gets built up and then this is known as the sound barrier and um, th that object then in order uh, to travel any faster has to break through this sound barrier and uh, then what happens is the waves, instead of um, all uh, it emitting uh, out from the source, the source is actually moved on and is further here to the right by the time this wave starts to expand. And so <clears throat> the waves begin to look like this, these circles that are getting smaller and smaller and arranged in this line. And if we look at the lines that run tangent to all these circles, this right here is what's known as the shock wave. <clears throat> and so if we want to measure the angle of the shock wave here, theta, we can calculate this, that the sine of theta is equal to the velocity of sound divided by the velocity of the object. So this is uh, just one of uh, several pretty interesting images I found online of um, supersonic aircraft, of uh, aircraft um, breaking through that compressed wall of air. So we are actually seeing a sonic boom occurring here in this picture. And you can see the shock wave as well coming off of it. And so uh, we've got our angle of theta there. The interesting thing is there's not just one. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. So um, depending on the shape of the object, here's another one right there, it looks like, as it passes through that, um, that um, speed of sound, it, when it goes ultrasonic, uh, it actually creates multiple shock waves. And uh, an analogy that can be used here uh, to help visualize what these um, shock waves look like as they pass through the air is to think of um, a boat or even a duck on water. And the waves they create um, look something like this. And if the object is able to travel faster, than the waves themselves do, you end up with these shock waves or wakes uh, in the water. So, of course, it's uh, a bit humorous to think of a, a swimming duck as uh, being supersonic. Uh, it's not faster than the speed of sound, but it is um, faster than the waves in the water. And so, again, um, as we saw in the image, um, an object that's exceeding the speed of sound can create multiple shock waves. Uh, the one we saw it looked like there was one coming off the cockpit, and one off the tail, and another off the wing. And so, <clears throat> when you're an observer on the ground and a uh, supersonic uh, aircraft flies overhead, you may experience multiple shock waves hitting you, one after another after another.
<clears throat> and um, moving on from um, the sound barrier and, and supersonic waves, uh, another uh, interesting way that um, sound waves can be used um, is in nature. Many creatures, um, such as uh, like the beluga whale down here from Finding Dory, uses um, sonar. Uh, he emits a, a sound wave that bounces off some little fish in the water, and then that bounces back to him, and his big old dome here is able to uh, perceive those sound waves and so the uh, beluga whale is able to uh, locate its prey using sonar. Um, sonar can be used in uh, ultrasound machines uh, in the healthcare field. Uh, here's an example of a high resolution ultrasound of, um, of a fetus in utero. And that actually brings us to the end of this chapter. And um, I know, uh, I think this is, what, the seventh or eighth video. So this one has gone on a little longer than uh, most of our previous chapters. And uh, uh, so thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, again, uh, use the discussion board to post questions if you have any. Uh, make sure you're keeping up with the homework. Uh, that you're not only watching my videos, but also the Khan Academy videos I have posted. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, the best way to do that, uh, especially with general questions, is on the discussion board.